Um, so I'm going to do a, a song here um, as we talk about Daniel and about Jerusalem and about the prophets. And I want to pay tribute to the, um, the writer, the song. We, we, we you know, help him with the song. He doesn't play music. So I don't know if he's playing music now, but he never did. He just had the desire to play. <laughs> but when he was singing this song, um, it was, you know, myself and um, Raymond. Um, he used a different name of Facebook. I'm not going to tell his name because he has his, <laughs> his secret name. Um, and uh, of course, it was um, a couple other guys. Uh, but we were, we played it. Remember, we did that song in concert um, in 1981, right? It's a long time ago, right? And um, I did a, a recording of it, and um, I'm going to play it. He, he was not a person who, um, who was born, you know, a Christian, but when he came to church, he had a, a great love for the book of Daniel. In fact, he called his first child Daniel, um, <laughs> and um, his name is Houston, right? Um, where he's right now, I, I think he's somewhere in England, somewhere there. But um, I'm going to do a song with Five Kingdoms, it's based on Daniel chapter 2, and um, I'm going to sing along with it. You're going to hear my voice on the recording, right? And um, you hear my voice here at the piano. And uh, we also hear um, Sam singing along with me. All right, so let me get that recording going and then we're going to um, listen to it. And by uh, the grace of God, we're going to our study. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah.
the dream and Nebuchadnezzar didn't remember the dream but God showed Daniel what the dream was and he gave him the interpretation and he was able to tell him that there would be five kingdoms he said the three more are coming after you and then there comes the eternal kingdom a stone cut out of the mountain without hands right and so 
You know, I, I'm not going to be talking much about that, but you know, one of the things that really bother people is like, uh, when you talk about a dynasty, they want that they will, king will always be king until he's dead, dead, right? And then, if anything, his son will take over, and then his son will continue, and then his son's sons, and so they expect that he will always continue. And sometimes I say to myself, like, I, I don't even know, I don't think it's really fair, uh, because you are just born in a palace, then you should just have everything just like that, and people should always be working for you. But as I speak about that, we want to talk about the redemption of Jerusalem. And as I think about it, I realize that that's basically the problem why we have to be talking about the redemption of Jerusalem. Because Jerusalem was not important until David took it and made it the capital of his kingdom. Right? Um, it was quite a feat, the Bible said it was called Jebus before, and uh, it was quite a feat that his captain, Job, his cousin, went, went out there. Right? They tell him that, you can't come in here, David. All right? we, we're not going to get inside here. But the Bible said David took it anyway. Right? His, his captain, they went there and they took it. And Jerusalem became the, capti the, um, the, the capital of the nation of Israel. Now, Israel got themselves into a lot of trouble. Right? And I was looking at some things yesterday. Um, you know, when you, when you start looking at the Bible, sometimes your eyes catch some things that if you don't care for, you lose track of what you were really looking for or whatever because if you don't mind, I mean, you could spend, you're looking for one scripture, it would take you maybe two minutes, and if you don't mind, you could have two hours, right? If you read the Bible and you study, you know what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> sometimes you, you know, so, the biggest problem that Israel had was the same thing named a king. And, same thing. And Moses told them, he said, a day is going to come when you're going to ask for a king. Did I speak about it the other day? And then, the days came in the year in Samuel, in the life of Samuel, who was the last judge of Israel. And he, he asked for a king. Samuel was very upset about it. And he told him, he said, what was going to happen to them? All right? And so, I'm going to read a scripture here. I think it's the last scripture I put in this morning on, on, um, on the post on Facebook. But Jesus was talking about, about something here. And let's look at it. Matthew chapter 23. Jesus said, verse 29, Warn to you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because he built the tombs of the prophets and garnished the sepulchres of the righteous and say, if we had been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. So they built, they built a, 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 a monument to them, right? And they said, we're honoring them. And say, if they were in the days of their fathers, they would not have killed them. Okay? This is something everybody needs to take note of because the Lord gives you a different perspective and I believe what you said is, is true right not just because I'm a Christian but because this is what I've seen right you know what I'm saying you can make a monument to Dr. King as much as you want right but you kill him so you can talk as much now right but you didn't get him to live all these years right because I, that, that the strategy is you kill him and they make a monument. And you say, okay, we honor him, right? But he's dead. You can't hear his voice anymore. You can't bother him anymore. So you can make a, an inanimate object and say this is Dr. King. But it's not Dr. King. Alright? I know where it might be. Alright? They make a statue of Jesus too. 
but they cut the idea that he's dead. We got him. We got rid of him. So if we make a statue. The statue can't do us anything. You can't go in the street and make demonstration and, and talk about this is wrong idea. Whatever. We can't do anything. All right. Okay. And think about that. The Bible said. That Jesus said that's what they do. Make a monument to the prophet. But Jesus said, wherefore ye be witnesses unto yourselves. Say, you are showing me something just by your action. That ye, um, ye are witnesses to yourselves that ye are the children of, of them which killed the prophets. Fill ye up then the measure of your fathers. Ye serpents, ye generation of vipers, how can ye uh, escape the damnation of hell? And he used the same expression that John the Baptist did when he preached. In Matthew chapter 3, verse 7, the generation of vipers. Wherefore, behold, I send you unto you, prophets, and wise men, and scribes, and some of them you shall kill, and um, some of them you shall kill and crucify, my God. And some of them shall ye scourge in your synagogues, and persecute them from city to city. That upon you, these are what happens to the prophets, you know. The Lord is saying that, that's what you do to them. Do you come making a monument? Right? Thinking that really, you impress the next generation. Right? But if you went back to your generation, who saw what you did, right? Saw what you did, right? What was done. They realize that, you know, hey, a monument doesn't make any difference. Okay? It makes no difference. Because the person is already dead. Okay? Just like in the grave. A tombstone. Hey, bring me a tombstone, right? When I'm dead, right? To honor me when I'm dead already. So what's the deal? I'm dead. Okay? That upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth. From the blood of righteous Abel, unto the blood of Zacharias, of Barakas, who perished, whom he slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. That's what Jesus is saying. That all the blood that was shed against men of God and prophets from Abel, who Cain slew, right up to Zacharias. Right? And um, the scripture tells you, right? And he goes on to say, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, that killeth the prophets, and stoneth them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thee, gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, for I said to you, ye shall not see me henceforth, till ye shall say, Better is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. So, you might know the story about Abel, how Cain killed Abel, but you might not know the story about Zacharias well, right? Because this, this king, um, Josh, if it wasn't for Zacharias' father, he would never have been king. Because Athaliah, um, who was a daughter of Jezebel, right, was killing out everybody that belonged to the royal sea. And Joash saved him so that he should not die, so that he would be king afterwards. When Athaliah found out about it, when they were doing the coronation, she was mad. She said, treason. Right? She didn't consider that she was um, a traitor who killed out the royal seed. He said treason. And she was killed. And Josh, when he was with Jehoiada, Jehoiada, he was following the ways of God. But when Jehoiada was dead, he was 130 some years old, I think. They buried him with the kings. And after that, everybody just started to reject God. They went a whoring from God, as the Bible used that term. And one day his son Zacharias couldn't take it anymore. And the Spirit of God came up and said, but, he said, but 
Why are you transgressing the commandment of God that you cannot prosper? I mean, th didn't you learn a lesson from history? And you see what happened before? And why would you go to that? And they got mad with it. They said, we don't want anything more from you anymore. All right? And they killed him right in the house of God. Right in the temple. That's where they killed him. I made a disgrace. And this is what I'm telling you sometimes when a person is dead. Dread, I would never have thought that I saved this child from being killed. Only to know that later on he's going to kill my son. And especially in such a disgraceful fashion. But when Jesus came and he was in the temple, he was 12 years old, he was talking to the doctors and lawyers. They said, but he asked them questions, read with them, right? You know the story, right? Because his parents went three days, think he was with them. They went, I think a day's journey, think he was with them, and they thought he wasn't there. Then they went back to Jerusalem looking for him. And of all the places where they were, he was in the temple. Right? So he's talking with them. And they're wondering, like, how does this boy know all of these things? Right? So he grew up, and they asked him, how, do, how does he know all these things? Right? We never, he never went to school with us, so how did he know all these things? So when Jesus was talking to them, he said to them, listen, I know what was done to Zacharias. I know what was done to his, he, um, I know what, what, what you guys did to him. Man. Right? So don't make a monument now and act like, you know, I mean, you know, you're going to honor him because he died in a disgraceful fashion. And the monument is not going to compensate for it. Okay? It's not going to compensate for it. I know some people that like the monuments and they make a big deal about it. They go there and they make a shrine to it. But I'm telling you, it's not going to compensate for the person who was killed because you silence his mouth. Right? You don't hear him again. Right? That's, that was the object, to silence him. Because he said, why transgress you the commandment of a God, a God that you cannot prosper? Now, there's so many things the Lord showed me about this, and I tell you even this, I never even plan to say. But when you look into the, the whole thing, what was the reason why Jerusalem was in trouble? Right? It was all because of her kings. Her wicked and evil kings. Her rulers were evil. That's the reason why Jerusalem was in trouble. Excuse me. The Bible said that when, excuse me, when, when Zacharias' father died, the princes came to Joash and said, I don't know, he didn't say what they said, but obviously it must be some evil. Because they came and uh, then he just changed, he just switched from God. And they left the house of God, the temple, closed up. Nobody interested in it anymore. They went to idolatry. So, basically, they were just waiting for Joanna to die so that they could go back to this, the worshipping idols. The main problem that Jerusalem had, as I said, was their kings. And their kings is what created the problem. You know, I have an old Bible there with a chronology of, of, of kings. And I could count out the few of them who you would say they were really good. Right? Some of them started out good and messed up big time. So what was Israel? Jerusalem was set up as the capital of, of Israel by King David. But David was going to die. He told Solomon that I wanted to build a house for, you, for God and God. God said, I really didn't ask you for a house, you know. Um, and I don't need one. But if you say you're going to do it, well, go ahead. But David said, all right, I make provision for the house. And you, Solomon, you build a house. Okay. So there, there are some things that went wrong here. It, with 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 uh, with with, it, with um, the nation of Israel, right? There's some things that went wrong with the nation of Israel. 
was because of their kings and because of this great desire to worship something that was made by hands, which was just like idolatry. They had seen the heathen worship and go to shrines and, and uh, worship images, right? They had seen them, and so they started to treat the house of God, the temple, as a shrine, okay? And, and, and the whole idea of worshiping the true and living God was cut out of it altogether. Then, apart from that, there were those who actually didn't even regard the temple afterwards. Now, as I said, when a man is dead enough, as I said, when he's dead, he doesn't know anything. Because I'm sure if David could do something about it, he would go back to, um, to Solomon and whoever his, his, um, his, his um, sons were and say to them, What are you doing? What are you doing here? Uh, Disgrace in the name of God, he would take them out of the tomb and throw them out. But there was nothing he could do because he's dead and gone. Right? As the Bible said, his sons come to honor, he knows it not. He doesn't know anything because he's dead. Okay? And the first thing now with Solomon was that Solomon built a temple as David told him. And he made this lavish thing with cedars and brass and gold and in the very foundation was laid with precious stones. And that was fine. Right? Overlaid it with gold and all this sort of thing he did. And God said, okay, you have a gift, I'll, I'll take the gift that you give me. But he warned them, he told them, he said, that if you despise my name, I'm going to cast you out, and I'm going to cast out the temple too. Both of you are going to get it. Right? I won't have any regard for this building, then I'm going to have a regard for you. And bo all of you, both of you are going to be destroyed. I don't know how much they took him seriously. Because they, you cannot appease God by a gift. What did God say, um, Samuel said to um to, to Saul? He said, that the light of God of great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice than obeying the voice of God. Okay, so he said that um you brought the best of the sheep to make a sacrifice to God. Okay, fine. So Samuel said, Okay, okay. So you think that that was better for you to bring an offering to God than just to do what he told you? It doesn't make any sense, right? You're really gratifying yourself and doing it your way and not God's way. He said to obey, he said, better than sacrifice and to heart than the fat of rams. So the, the, the temple was a gift for God. But God was saying to them the same thing that Samuel said, to obey is better than a gift. I didn't ask for the gift. Right? And I don't really need it. Right? Because Solomon himself said it. He said, who can really make a house that God could dwell in? I mean, it's bigger than the house. It's bigger than the earth. Right? Even the heavens said can't contain him. So the idea of making a house that you said for God to dwell in, you must understand you are still playing with Legos. That's what you're doing. Okay? You're playing with Legos and you make a little house and your daddy asks, so what? What is that? And he says, a house, daddy, I make a house for you. He says, oh, that's nice. And he take it and maybe put it down. And he says, okay, that's nice. Right? But he knows he can't live in it. Okay? He mean that he can't live in it. But he take the gift anyway. Okay? To make you feel good. Right? But he's expecting that you will also do things to make him feel good.